Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode on the B2B marketing and sales automation tools. I mean, by now, you know, we really work really hard to find the latest tools and the latest automation hacks that could help your B2B outreach grow. And I really think that we found some really interesting. I mean, I have on the call Gotham, who is the CEO and co-founder of OneShot AI. He has some really interesting story to tell. So Gotham, first, welcome. Thank you, Danjo. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, well, uh, for everybody out there, I mean, we already started some collaboration with Gotham and we really love their tool. And I thought that, yeah, why don't we use this opportunity to introduce it to the rest of our community? So Gotham, before we get into the details, perhaps a short introduction about who you are, what you do, so people will get the, the background idea. Yeah, no, cool. Perfect. So yeah, my name is Gotham, I'm based out of London. So before starting one shot, my, my background is B2B sales. So for the last 20 years, that's all I've done. Um, so originally 2004, I was like a BDR, um, for an American tech company called Empirix. Uh, we did, you know, software testing. And for the last 10 years, I've been building and scaling sales teams in EMEA. So for Akamai, Cloudbees, one e CD networks, and typically, you know, this is I join it when the EMEA region is about a million dollars, and we scale them up to like forty or fifty million dollars. Um, one thing that I've seen time and time again is we've scaled sales teams. Um, when you hire new SDRs and AEs and enterprise AEs, this prospecting has become really difficult. Everyone is using like automation tools. People are sending the same message. Buyers are getting frustrated. Um, and one thing I've seen with highly successful sales teams, uh, the top performing salespeople take time to personalize messaging. Mm -hmm. So they don't just kind of spam the same people. And, you know, to personalize messaging takes time. So we thought with one shot, how can we help salespeople personalize at scale? Um, so going away from the high activity to focus on you know, high quality activity and the right activity as well. Um, and that's why we built one shot. Um, so we've, we've been used by thousands of sales reps to help them with their B2B outreach. Um, and really at the core of all of this is how can we help personalize, um, to each individual prospect without changing the salesperson's current workflow? Salespeople don't want to learn another sales tool. They, like, they want to be able to do this within the tools that are already familiar with today. So that's why we came up with one shot. Um, and yeah, it's great, great to be here talking about it. Gautam, as we are an agency, I recall two or three years ago, we were hired to actually do that customization for a client manually. So what yeah. we were actually having a spreadsheet. So we're going to click the link. You're going to scroll, search a bit about, about the guy and provide one paragraph customization that later was used into the whole B2B self process. So when I saw that uh, one shot AI is out there on the market, I was like, wow, time flies. I mean, a few years ago, we had to do everything manually. And now you're really focused on, on that particular part. And how does the one shot AI fit in the big uh, ecosystem? I mean, B2B sales is a huge ecosystem to work in from databases, from verifications, from email, from LinkedIn, from copywriting tool. I saw several now that are emerging. So where is the, where is one shot AI positioned in the whole ecosystem? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think there's, I would say B2B sales tools is probably one of the most like busy tools market there is today. And if you speak to a hundred reps, they'll probably have a hundred different tools they use from rep to rep, even within organizations. Um, where do we fit in? We fit in a, kind of across all of them. So we actually fit in across the entire sales tool stack. So what do I mean by that is we integrate with CRM systems like Salesforce to understand what is your ideal customer profile look like? Who are your existing customers? Can we save leads? Um, if you break down um, the sales prospecting journey or the sales journey, you kind of have a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah. Um, the beginning is from first contact, right? How do I find my initial first contact? Typically, that's one of three ways. You either have it in your CRM system, like as an inbound lead, or you use LinkedIn and you're finding people, or you use a data provider, like a Zoom info or yeah, Cognizant or something like that, right? So the data providers are the data providers, the CRMs are the CRMs. When you find that initial contact, 
typically the first thing people are doing is they're, you know, they're either using LinkedIn to send a connection request or they're using a data provider like ZoomInfo to find out or Lasha or Cognizant to say, okay, what's this guy's or girl's email address? Contact information. And, and, and then they start that workflow, which is either we either send a sequence on outreach or sales loft or HubSpot, or we send them an individual email. So we work across all of those solutions. So whether you're in sales navigator or LinkedIn, mm -hmm. what we do is we can help personalize that connection request. Um, if you decide you want to send a sequence, we also integrate with data providers. Um, so you can send a sequence, whether that's via sales loft or outreach. Um, Again, what we don't want to do and what we, where we don't sit, we don't sit as this mass automation tool. People don't like um, the idea of, you know, their personal brand is LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn and social selling is becoming more and more important. So yeah. you don't really want to create something that does like five, 600 tasks on your behalf that you have no control over. Um, Think about the kind of negative effect that might have on your personal brand if you're just like known to just, okay, this, this person is obviously spamming hundreds of people a day. Um, so where we sit in is how can we help personalize um, connection requests? How can we help follow up on invites in a really highly personalized way? So one thing we do is how can we find latest news on companies? So if we're targeting, let's just say, I don't know, Barclays Bank, um, what we would do is we'll automate a highly personalized message to send to like, hey, I just read the news and we'll look for the latest news articles mm -hmm. for Barclays Bank. We can look and investigate within our CRM. Show me similar customers I have to Barclays. So we integrate with Datafy, say, hey, Barclays is a 200,000 employee finance customer in London. Show me similar accounts Ooh, like HSBC. that you can drop their names into the chat. Yeah, exactly. And we, nice. we integrate and pull that messaging in. So we've looked at what are the highly successful salespeople doing that get responses. They're personalizing similar customers. They're looking for latest news. They're looking for personal connections that they may have with that person. And what we do is we automate all of that. So you don't have to do that research yourself. We bring that into play ourselves. Um, and that's, that's where we see higher response rates. We're working with um, customers who are seeing a 300% increase in response rates using one shot. Mm, nice. Nice. You know, I, I, as the more I'm listening to you, the more I'm bought into the story because <laughs> uh, we were always preaching that quality should supersede the quantity because even before the, the new algorithm of LinkedIn, which was in May or in June, where they said no more 2000 outreaches per month, let's put it down to 100 per week or 400 per month, a lot of automation tools were facing a crisis because they were betting on quantity. The more you can send, the better. Mm -hmm. And Bisbee was really focusing on quality because we knew that as with the email, the quality will always be better. LinkedIn, it started being a spammy platform where people stopped looking at it. The generic message, hi, my name is Dan, I sell X, Y, Z. <laughs> Without trying to build a report, actually how you behave in the physical world, you actually switch and behave completely irrational in the digital. So looking at how to improve the quality over a quantity is, should be every SDR focus because regardless whether you're going to send 400 or 800, I would rather send 50, but to be really quality rather than actually going to off over the 2000. Yeah. And Gautam, how does this actually work in practice? How, how hard is to, to customize, you know, this uh, paragraph that you're referring to and how accurate is, I mean, is it prone to, to mistake? Is, is it something like, Okay, you can damage your brand if you make bad assumptions. Is there any quality control that you can do before we actually do do the outreach? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, some some good points and questions there. So we've built this. I think my background has always been building and scaling sales teams. So, and I I am a salesperson. Right, my background is sales. Mm -hmm. So I kind of understand that sales persona quite well. What salespeople don't want is to learn another complicated tool. They don't want to have to do loads of research, right? But they do want to, they do, you know, they want to be successful. They want to build pipeline, they want to make commission. So how we've built this is it's seamless within their workflow. So uh, I can show you a demo shortly. But what, what we do is we can, <clears throat> within their workflow, within their LinkedIn activity, 
they just click on a profile that they would normally visit. Instead of manually connecting, they connect with OneShot. And we even automate that messaging. Um, in terms of quality control, multiple things, right? We have our own AI engine that looks for the best type of messages to use on each individual person. Um, if there's certain typos that occasionally come in or the AI engine doesn't work as well, you can always manually change it, right? Like with any system, right? You know, there's self-driving cars out there in the world, but, you know, you, you still want to have your hand on the wheel occasionally. Um, and I think you, you touched on a good point there, Dancho, around quality over quantity. Um, and actually, funny, the, the company name OneShot, why we came up with the name OneShot was actually, you know, if you had one shot um, to book a cold meeting. If your boss came up to you and said, hey, I'll give you a million dollars if you get me a meeting with this account, the chances are you're not going to be spamming that customer. If you had that on the line, you would spend time to research. You would have a tactical plan. You would write the best possible message you possibly could. And that's why we came up with one shot. Business intelligence on the business, on the employee, whether he likes cats or dogs, just before doing the outreach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, Gautam, I would really love if you could share a demo or share your screen and show how actually the tool can be sure. used. Let me share my screen. So yeah, the whole the whole way of um, working with OneShot is I'm in LinkedIn Sales Navigator here, mm -hmm. um, and you'll see the Chrome extension, right? The Chrome extension um, sits here and it's seamless. We don't appear if it's not in there. Now let's take a normal workflow. Let's say I want to contact someone. I'll click on a profile. Before I open the extension, I just scroll. Right? And you can do it as quickly as possible. Now at this point, I can either send a connection request or a message, like an email message. Let's say I want to connect. What we do is we'll automatically look and personalize messaging without doing anything. So we can see that this person's just recently moved companies. We can talk about their job title. We'll even mention mutual connections. And again, you've seen, I did absolutely nothing. Yeah, click a button. Um, we have eight connections in common, and we're mentioning those connections in common. If you just mention the names of those people, psychologically, when people see that, they think that, oh, we know each other. We know in those same networks. Um, we're looking at locations where they're based. I see you're based in Brooklyn. How are you finding your time at Hyperscience? These messages will keep going on and on, and we'll have lots of different options. So we'll have different options for different styles. Um, I'm not sure if you saw here. We can also allow um, sales reps to create their own template. Um, so if you don't like our messaging, what you can also do, and what we see a lot of successful salespeople doing, is creating their own template. What works really well is if you have an upcoming event or webinar and say, Dan Chah, I'm, yeah, I'm prospecting you, um, we're both at a sales conference. I would message, I would have a template. Hey, I'm at Sasta next week. Dan Cho, are you going to be there? It'd be great to connect. By just having that mutual event, what you're seeing, we're seeing a really high response rate. The other key point to mention, just by personalizing um, your LinkedIn request, you're going to significantly improve your chances of being accepted um, versus non-personalization. People are getting, you know, 10, 20 invites a day um, and they're just not getting accepted. So let me say I want to use one of these invites. Let's say I click that, I click use. We auto populate that message for you. So you don't have to do anything. So I can just click send and we do two, three things here. We save that to your CRM and we create a follow up. So let me just show you another person. If we quickly click on a, another lead. But you still but I, have the main control before you send the send button. You can exactly. add some tweaks before the message. Exactly. You've got it, right? And now, let's just click on someone else. It comes up again straight away with these with these connection requests. Um, sometimes as well, like exactly to your point, you may say, actually, you know what? I don't like using that. I want to change that. Or actually, I'll use the basics of this. Um, and you can just add to it here, right? And right, I won't send it with the word testing in, but you get you get the gist. Um, so that's one key bit. It's it's seamless personalization within the reps, the salesperson's current workflow. That's really important. You can manually change that personalization, plus you can create your own templates. Now the next bit, um, which is the more interesting bit, in my opinion, 
is one thing that's always been challenging within LinkedIn is being able to follow up with a personalized note. Again, there's, I call them, you know, bot based solutions where they'll just look and they'll send a spam follow up or, you know, when people get those, you connect with them and you get an immediate message two seconds later after you go. Yeah. I think everyone is annoyed by those um, things. That we, are joke here, we joke here at BSB, whether you're going to pitch me at the invitation or whether you're going to pitch me at the message after the invitation. And we're like, is it going to be immediately or right after? Yeah. But yeah, people kind of do those stuff. And, and, and you think, right, and you think about, you know, large enterprise customers where the buyers are probably being approached 50, 100 times a day. So you've got to think about how can you stand out, right? And it's multi-channel prospecting. It's, you know, cold calling, email, LinkedIn, invite, social selling, trade shows. Yeah, there's, there's multiple ways of doing things. But yeah. where we see a ton of results is the follow-up. So let's say here is we will create this. Again, our whole thing is, um, you'll see here, now I go into my follow-ups. We automatically can pull out when you have follow-ups. So we change this based on like days after an invite. So versus saying, hey, he's just accepted or she's just accepted, I'm going to immediately spam them. We give you the power. So let's say here, I go into Monday 27th, I've got 36 follow-ups to do. We put this down to the rep and now I can click follow-up and we'll do a few things here when I push follow-up. We apply AI. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tell you if that person's connected. We can say, you can send them a message, you can send them an email or you can add them to That's a sequence. The sequence. You can add them to a sequence using your favorite tools like Outreach or Salesloft. And again, now I can decide, do I want to follow up? Do I want to send them a message? And I can just continually go down each one. And what you'll see here is like, we've got quite a high connection rate. Because of our high personalization, we see a really high connection rate, anywhere between 50 to 75%. Without personalization, you know, it's anywhere between like 20 and 30%. Let's say here with this person, I'm connected, I've got an additional option here, engage with Lizzie's activity. So what we're doing is we our AI engine saying, hey, actually, this might be a good one to do. And you can click on that and it will actually take you to their recent activity. And at this point, you know, I can click like, like sure. that, which is going to make that a lot easier for me to engage with. Um, here you can see, okay, this person, it's pending, but what we can see, it's an open profile. So that means I can send a free message. I don't need to use an in-mail credit. So again, what we're doing is we're creating this easy way to follow up with all of your leads. Let's say now I go to this person here. I want to follow up with them. Brilliant. I'm connected. Now I want to send a message. What we'll do is we'll automate this messaging for you. We'll even add in your sales pitch. So we can look and we can change. We use AI to auto-generate the sales pitch for our companies. Um, and at this point, let's say I want to use it. We help salespeople close deals. I'm happy with that message. Which is can, just from? I can click send and that message will now send. And that message is now sending and send. Follow-up is closed. So it really gives me the opportunity to get through my follow-up super quickly. Um, and the response rate on follow-ups on LinkedIn is way higher than email. LinkedIn has response rates and acceptance rates on emails between like 8 to 15%. You compare that to email, which is around 1%. So just by following up on invites in a good personalized way at the right time means you're going to you know, almost increase your results by 10x compared to just normal email. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a quick demo. It's super easy. It's a Chrome extension. You can go to oneshot.ai, download the extension. You can get up and running. We're seeing people setting up two, three new meetings the first day they use it, just with the invites. Oh, nice. That's really, really strong. I mean, we, we also use a mix of Gotham of LinkedIn and an email in our outreach process. And yeah, we, we actually give the clients to choose. Well, some clients just want to say, you know what? I want to rent an SDR, in which case everything is fully manual. And in some cases, they're like, which is of course more expensive. Mm -hmm. While other cases, clients are, you know what? You can use as much automation that you want. Mm -hmm. And this, 
one shot AI is really somewhere in between because when you use automation, it's like high name and some, we, we actually don't try with the pitch strategy. We try with conversation starters in order to first get some response and then do the one on one chit chat. While with the fully manual is really an SDR that can do a lot of personalization. Now, one shot actually can help in both cases. You can first do the paragraph and then, then do some automation okay. or with the manual, just because we have to do this manual research, we can just with a click of a button, at least speed up the, the efficiency of the SDR teams. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's getting that balance, right? And I, I've managed, I've probably hired I don't know, maybe close to a hundred SDRs in, in, in the last 10 years. And, you know, you get two types sometimes. One type is they're just aimlessly clicking, send sequence, clicking, send sequence. Um, and then the other type is I'm going to spend half a day researching, sending out the highest personalized message I can. And, you know, both potentially get results, but you, know, you need somewhere in between. You need to still do the activity because you could come up with the best personalized message, but the person you're targeting just won't respond. They've probably never responded to a cold email in their lives and they probably never will. So if you, if you spend half a day prospecting that person with a personalized message, you won't get a response. So what we do is we kind of create that halfway house where it's personalization at scale within your workflow. Nice, nice. No, I think it's really, really useful. I mean, the website one shot AI, I'll, I'll leave it at the bottom of, of the video. Uh, is there any free version that people could actually give it a try so they can see how it works? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can download it, get running with it for free immediately. Um, so it's a two week free trial. You can send as many messages as you want. Um, LinkedIn, you know, typically put in this process around 100 invites a week or whatever, 400 a month. Um, we actually keep track of the invites you send as well. So we actually have in a really easy way, we'll show you, hey, you've sent 20 invites this week or 50 invites this week. Um, yeah, get using it for free for two weeks. Um, and then, you know, typically we see follow ups are happening a week after. So that two week period, you get to send invites and follow up um, and see what your results are. I see. Yeah. I mean, good. Um, uh, I meant either a duration of free trial or with a limited capacity where you can send only unlimited invitations because usually people really tend to like, let me give it a try a day or two, even two weeks is even too much if you ask me. <laughs> Whether to you try can have a shorter one if you want. If it want. Works we, with you. We can give you a two-day trial. <laughs> like we're gonna correct the decision. <laughs> I see. And how is actually one shot AI open for for partnerships or for collaborations? I mean, as a software as a service, does it have any white label or affiliate or referral programs? Yeah, absolutely. So we are we are open to all partnerships. Um, you know, we're a high growth startup. Um, we're in you know a heavy customer acquisition mode. So if people are looking to partner with us from a, a sales or resale perspective, we're completely open to that. We also have a referral system in place. Um, so we've you know we've priced this um, in a way that most of our customers are actually individual salespeople expensing back the license on behalf of their company every month. We priced it at nineteen dollars a month. Um, so you know it's easy enough. Most people are expensing it through their company. Um, if you refer, you know, five or 10 people, we have like referral systems in place as well, where we can actually look at, you know, reimbursing with dollars or Amazon gift vouchers or, or you yeah, know, swag. Whatever. I see. No, but $20 is not a lot of money for an SDR. I mean, if it, if, if in a whole month it saves you at least one hour from your time, you're already in a benefit. And if it saves you days in a month, then it's a really yeah. useful tool to, to have, regardless whether the company will cover your cost or not. Yeah. Even from my own pocket for the 20, for that amount of money, I know that I could just what I need to do in eight hours, I can do it in six and then I have the rest of the two hours for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah we, we, we kind of price this at a point where. We feel everyone should be using one shot and we don't want price to be a barrier. Um, we feel that prospects deserve a level of personalization as well. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, if you do the math, there's like stats to say one cold meeting booked costs $500. Um, how people have worked out that math is to say a fully loaded, you know, US based SDR maybe is like $50,000 a year. 
yeah. um, including overheads. And they, you know, their targets are typically 10 meetings a month. So if you work out the cost of a fully loaded SDR minus, you know, divided by how yeah, much it costs, about yeah, 500, exactly. 500 bucks a month, uh, 500 bucks a meeting. So we've priced this at a point and say, hey, even if you built one new meeting um, with us, which you typically will in the first week, um, it's paid for itself like five times, 10 times over. Um, and this is excluding the one to two hours of time saving as well per, per week. And got on one last question for me personally. I mean, how, how is the software handled for agencies where one SDR actually needs to handle more than one LinkedIn campaign? Usually it's two or three, but still, can they actually switch between or they need separate account for each LinkedIn profile? How, how do you actually sort that out? Yeah. So it's, it's one, one profile that we, we work on. So if you have agencies, you can kind of just use one, one shop profile. And that goes across all of your LinkedIn accounts. Um, so you don't need multiple licenses. Wait, so with one, with one license, you can go across multiple profiles. Yep. Oh, that's even cheaper than, than, than <laughs> in BSB. We have like some SDR handle one LinkedIn profile, but we have with two, three. So you're actually tying it to the seat. So that person is going to pay for the, uh, subscription and then they can use it for multiple accounts. They can log out. They can log in with the another LinkedIn. Exactly. We, it's, not, it's what, whatever they do in LinkedIn. That's what I'm saying. We just sit across their, their, their browser, their machine. And that's it. Um, but you're giving me ideas now. Maybe we, uh, <laughs> maybe we need to charge more. Yeah, actually, I thought that it's based on LinkedIn profile. So if an SDR uh -huh. uses three LinkedIn profiles, they need to take three licenses because the license is tied to that particular LinkedIn profile. And another question was that, yeah, we, we all use Sales Navigator, but does it support non-Sales Navigator outreach? Absolutely. So we work across normal, standard LinkedIn and Sales Navigator I as see. well. I see because we all, all the campaigns that we run are with sales navigator, but I know that there are people that does the outreach with, without the sales navigator. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like without kind of like going into a one shot sales pitch, um, we've really spent a lot of time focused on how we can work with salespeople in their workflow. Mm -hmm. And actually Just. a salesperson's workflow is across LinkedIn and sales navigator. Excuse me, you know, people might be on LinkedIn to read not their latest posts and see what news is going on. And they may send a connection request from there. They may be in sales navigator and they may be doing specific lead lists or account lists. Um, you'll see most, we actually have probably a 50 50 split of where who invites are sent from across sales uh, navigator and LinkedIn. Because ultimately, I don't know, you today, you've probably been in both platforms today, right? Yeah. Yeah. True. True. I thought that because with Sales Navigator, you have the more advanced filters to do laser focus the targets on multiple criteria. It helps a lot when we yeah. do an outreach campaign. And I got them the, the last question I had was that where is one shot AI headed? I mean, what's the plans for, okay, late 2021 or 2022? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So where we, where we see the biggest problem in sales today is. There's no visibility into what prospecting channels are effective across what persona. We all have our kind of gut feel. Uh, this, this type of position likes this type of message, but it's kind of in here and that changes from one rep to another. So think of like one shot as being this kind of system of intelligence across all of your prospecting activity. So the ability to see what prospecting activity works with any specific prospect, whether that's uh, a LinkedIn invite or a cold call, what the message should be. So it's really applying this intelligence across all of your prospecting channels. So a good example is think about like Google Analytics for your website. You know where all of your traffic is coming from, what's converting traffic, everything. <laughs> everything. This doesn't exist for, for prospecting today. And we already have this system built today where we know what's your acceptance rate across what persona? Who's responding to what email? What reps are successful with what channel? And how does that tie back to the individual and the company? Where are we seeing our best response rates? So where we sit, because we're a browser extension, we see across all prospecting activity. So again, reps like to work in multiple different ways and how we work today will be different how we work next week or the week after or next year 
Um, so again, what we provide is that level of intelligence of what works and what doesn't work. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about that. And we have some more kind of product and features coming out that are going to you know, further accelerate this. So you're the numbers guy. Metrics and not actually understanding the metrics into business logics and business decisions. It's like, okay, based on data, we can confirm that this channel works better than this or this message actually yields better responses. Exactly. So it's that visibility, metrics and insight. So it's like, okay, great. We have all of this data, but tell me what to do. It's yeah. almost between it a sequence, there's what we call micro activity. So you send stage one of a sequence and stage two of a sequence. But actually, there's quite a lot happening between that in terms of number of opens, right? So they may have nine opens between that. So actually, what we'll do is we'll pause that sequence automatically and say, hey, don't send stage two of this sequence. Instead, follow up with this activity because you're much more likely to get a response. Yeah. If they um, so really, we're focused on helping, helping salespeople with making those decisions based on data. Nice. That's actually quite inspiring. So I'll, I can't wait for the next updates on, on 2022 and actually see, see how one shot AI is progressing. Um, Gautam, I think that we're finishing with, with this episode. We are running out of time. Uh, I really wanted to, to thank you for, for coming on the show and for everybody else that are listening. I mean, one shot AI, have a look at it. There will be links at the bottom and give it a try. I mean, What's the worst case that it can be? You can try it for two weeks and you don't like it and that's it. Well, what's the best thing that could happen is that within two weeks, you can actually close a client and think, wow, if I manage to do this in two weeks, then I should actually consider it on a more serious level. And maybe that's what is Gotham trying to do here. Create a free trial, give it a try, you'll see the results for yourself and then make the decision whether you want to continue using it as a tool or, or not. Uh, Gautam, thank you again for, for coming to the show and for the rest of the listeners. I mean, have a great day, guys, and we touch, we talk soon. Thank you.